Hello and welcome to our physical sciences session. My name is Temba Nube. Today we are focusing our attention on the revision of stoichiometric problems. I uh, will address a number of, you know, different questions ranging from the multiple choice as well as, you know, structured questions. So now this is the concept mapped in as far as quantitative aspects of chemical change, right? So you'd realize that, uh, you know, it covers a broad, you know, aspects of, you know, of, of, of chemical change. And the questions on stoichiometry, uh, you know, can be on any of the concepts as long as there is a chemical reaction. It could be on limiting reagents, yield, purity, you know, it could talk about percentage composition, you know. So just pay attention to the fact that a stoichiometric problem can be asked in whichever, you know, uh, uh, context of chemistry, right? And uh, the most important thing that we also need to remind ourselves is the data sheet, right? So the data sheet forms, you know, the most important part of our, 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 you know, information sheet in terms of responding to questions. So familiarize yourself with the data sheet and be able to identify the correct formula. One, the general rule is that we do not change the subject. We copy the formula as it is, and then, you know, uh, try and isolate the unknown as part of our, our, our responding to, to questions, right? So the, the mole concept is broad, and it covers a number of aspects. It could be with respect to the Avogadro number, right? Uh, it could be, you know, in terms of molar gas volume at STP. So we need to qualify that at standard temperature and pressure that a mole of any gas occupies a fixed volume. It could be on concentration, you know. So the two formulae can be used, uh, you know, uh, one after the other. Or the, sec the, 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 the second part uh, is actually a combination of the mole uh, uh, you know, calculation and the concentration to give us the formula C is equals to M over MV. Right. Let's look at uh, multiple choice. You know, uh, you are given four options, but what is important in as far as the multiple choice question is to read the question with an intention to understand without even looking at the given options. You know, in the case that you get stuck, you can also do the elimination uh, as part of, you know, uh, identifying the most correct response. So this question says, 10 moles of hydrogen gas and 2,5 moles of nitrogen gas. Okay, these are the two reactants. They are allowed to react to form ammonia according to the following balanced equation of reaction. So the, the, the equation of reaction, what does it tell us? It tells us that uh, this is the stoichiometric ratio in which these substances actually react with each other, right? So take pay attention, the, the mole is the SI unit of quantity of matter. So we don't talk mass, you know, we don't talk volume, we talk about a mole, because why a mole of any substance has the same or constant number of particles, whatever the particles could be. It could be the mole, it, it could be, the, you know, the, the ions, it could be the atoms, it could be molecules. So we always talk about the mole, right? So in this case, we are given the quantities in SI unit, okay? So three moles of hydrogen reacts with a mole of nitrogen to give us two moles of ammonia. So we are told that if four moles of ammonia are formed during the reaction, what are the remaining moles of the reactants, right? So we want to know that after forming four moles of ammonia, how much will be left in terms of, you know, uh, uh, the hydrogen and, and the nitrogen, right? Okay, so we know that um, if we have got four moles of ammonia that are, are, are formed, okay? To form four moles, how many moles of nitrogen are needed if one forms two? So to form four moles, we would need, so our ratio, right? Our ratio is three is to one is to two. So for us to form four moles, how many moles do we need? We need half that number, which is two. So initially, okay, initially, Okay, what do we have? We've got 10 moles, right? Uh, and 2,5 moles, right? Okay, and then we had nothing there, okay? Now, if um, the change in moles that we get here in this case, if we, we started with 2.5 moles and two of them reacted, how much of nitrogen is left? 0, 0,5 mole, okay? Right, okay? And then for us to, 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 
to react the two moles if the ratio of nitrogen to hydrogen is one is to three. So if we reacted two, we need three times as much of hydrogen as, 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 ammonia, as, as nitrogen. So what do we have here? We have six, right? Because two times three gives us six. So if we started with 10, okay, the remaining will be, will be four if we, we, we reacted six, okay? So this is what remains for hydrogen and for nitrogen. So if we go to our, 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 our solutions, okay, we know that we'll be left with four of hydrogen, okay? So the option is between C and D. But for us to eliminate the correct one, I uh, would know that for ammonia, uh, actually for, for nitrogen, we're left with 0 0.5. So this becomes the correct answer. So these other options are totally out. Then our correct option becomes option C, right? And then in the next question, we have a solution um, that will have the greatest concentration of hydrogen ions um, uh, when complete ionization uh, occurs. So what do we have here? We've got sulfuric acid. For every mole of sulfuric acid, right, we actually get double the number of moles of hydrogen ions, okay? And the sulfate, one. So the, the ratio is two is to one in terms of the product. But as far as HCl, what do we have? Uh, we have got one produces one mole of HCl, uh, you know, ionizes to give us what? Uh, one mole of 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 hydrogen ion, okay? Right, and then, so the, the, in this case, this one, uh, sulfuric acid becomes a diprotic, while hydrochloric becomes a monoprotic. But then also we have another one. This uh, ethanoic acid CH3, COOH, will also give us one for every mole that dissociates, okay? So we need to pay attention to that. So here, we, if we want a higher concentration, we we'll look at these options because it says the greatest of them all. So we need a, 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 the one that will have, you know, the greatest. So 0 0,4, if it dissociates, it will give us double 0 0,4, which is 0 0,8, right? Okay, so this one will give us what? 0 0,8 mole per cubic decimeter, right? while um, the second one will give us the same 0 0,4, okay? Okay, mole per cubic decimeter of the ion. The second one will also give us, uh, you know, if, if we've got um, one cubic decimeter, well, that's the volume, okay? So if we, 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 we look at the, the second one, which says 0 0,4 moles of that. So if, it, if that's the, the volume, okay? Uh, we know that concentration is equal to number of moles over volume, okay? So we'll try and, and, and actually get which, as to which one has got a greater concentration. But if you realize that this gives us double the number of, of, of moles. So obviously, that's, that's what we pay attention to. So our option uh, in that case will eliminate in the process and at the end of the day, we'll make a comparison in terms of the quantities, right? So, and as far as multiple choice is concerned, what is very important is that you read the question carefully before you answer, and also try and eliminate. It's not a simple guesswork. So that's as far as the multiple choice, you know, as an example of stoichiometric problems, okay? Well, that's it for now. We shall take a short break for now, and then we'll come back and, and do more problems. <music> Welcome back. We're still focusing our attention on more stoichiometric problems and try to understand some of the, you know, important things that we have to take note in as far as, you know, sharpening our skills of, you know, responding to stoichiometric problem. And it's also very important to note that the questions on stoichiometry can be asked on any topic as long as it involves a chemical reaction. Now let's look at one more example in terms of these questions on stoichiometry. Right, okay, now we have got uh, 40 grams of ion metal uh, and 35 grams of chlorine, okay? This is, these are the quantities in terms of mass that are given. These two, they react to form ion three chloride. 
very, very important in terms of chemical formula. Ion 3, because ion is a transition metal, it simply says to us that in this ionic compound, ion has an oxidation number of 3 plus, okay? Right, but the balanced equation of reaction is already given to us. Uh, it says four moles of ion reacts with three moles of uh, 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 chlorine, right, to give us two moles of ion uh, three chloride, right? So what does this tell us? It tells us that the stoichiometric ratio in which these substances participate in this chemical change are is four is to three is to two, right? Now the first question, define, that's the action verb, right? So in as far as definitions are concerned, we need to be very, very, uh, uh, you know, specific and pay attention to the key words. So our examination guidelines are our point of reference in as far as remembering definitions. We must capture the key words in the correct context. And also remember that in as far as definitions, because it's just about remembering. So it's either you get the full two marks or nothing. So the, you need to, uh, you know, practice our definition Always, these are our quick wins, these are our easy marks in as far as questions are concerned, right? So the definition of the term limiting reagent, okay, what is a limiting reagent? This is the substance, okay? Uh, the reactant, okay, which, whose quantity, okay, or whose amount, okay, uh, determines the amount of product obtained. Of product in a reaction, okay? So in, 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 in other words, we are saying that uh, this is the substance or the reactant that gets used up. So the, the amount of, 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 of product that is obtained in a chemical reaction depends on the quantity of the limiting reagent, okay? Now the follow-up question says, uh, calculate which of the reactants will be used up in the reaction, right? Okay, so the one that is going to be used up, in other words, we would rephrase the question and say, uh, what is it that the question uh, demands of us? It actually wants us to identify by means of calculations that is uh, the substance that is a limiting reagent, okay? Right, so this is a stoichiometric calculation. What are we given? We are given masses, right? But then what is the SI unit of quantity of matter in a chemical reaction? We talk about the mole. Now, let's check because we've got the stoichiometric ratio of four is to three is to two, okay? Now, we are paying our attention on the reactants because we want the limiting reagent. So we can safely classify this question under limiting reagent, okay? So it's all about the limiting reagent, okay? So we're going to do a couple of calculations for us to arrive at that. So the stoichiometric ratio is there from the balanced equation. Now the next thing that we ask ourselves is um, what, how many moles are there for each of the sample of substance of the reactants, right? So we know that the number of moles, the moles of iron rather, okay, is equals to mass of sample over molar mass, right? What's the mass of iron sample in, 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 that is given? It's 40 grams, right? Divided by the molar mass, which is 56, right? So let's, let's, let's calculate the moles of iron in this case. So the moles is gonna be 40 grams divided by 56 grams per mole. That gives us, uh, as a decimal fraction, 0 0.71 moles, okay? So this is equals to 0 0.71 mole, okay? What about the moles of uh, uh, iron, uh, sorry, uh, chlorine that we have? So the moles present for chlorine, which is a diatomic, you know, molecule, is equals to mass of the sample over the molar mass, okay? The given mass of the sample is 35 grams, right? Divided by the molar mass, uh, which is two, multiplied by 35.5, right? So if we go to our calculator, what do we get? Um, we'll have 35, okay, divided by two multiplied by 35.5, okay? Right, close that bracket. Okay, this gives us a value of 0 0.49 moles, right? So there's 0 0.49 
49 moles of chlorine. All right. Now, let's ask ourselves an uh, important question. Let's say, for argument's sake, um, we, 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 we know that for every four moles of, of iron, there should be three moles of chlorine. Right. So if we say, for argument's sake, if all the, let's say, all the, the, the iron has to react, the ratio of iron to chlorine gas is actually 4 is to 3, right? So 4 is to 3. Now let's say, assume that the entire 0.71 moles reacts, how much of chlorine do we need? Let's say that is x, all right? So by simple calculation, the x in this case becomes uh, 3 multiplied by 0.71 by cross multiplication over 4, right? All right, then we can evaluate that and try and decide if indeed all the ion will react. And when we say all the ion reacts, we are saying, in other words, ion is the, is, we are just checking by trial and error, is ion our limiting reagent or not, okay? So what do we have there from the calculator? We get uh, three multiplied by 0.71, right? Divided by four, okay? What does that give us? It gives us 0 0.5, right? Now, in other words, uh, we, for, for all the ion to react, we need 0.53. But how much of chlorine do we have? We've got 0 0.49. Then it means all the ion will not react because we can't have 0 0.53 of 0 0.49 reacting. In other words, we have less of chlorine. Now, let's do it the other way around and use the same ratio of 4 is to 3. All right? Let's say all the chlorine reacts, okay, how much of chlorine do we have? Not comma, four nine, right? And then how much for not comma, four nine, how much of ion do we need, right? So it's still the same ratio, ion is to chlorine, okay? Right, so by simple calculation, our X becomes, um, we cross multiply four, multiplied by zero comma, four nine, right? Over three, okay? So if we can, check uh, that on our calculator, what do we have? We have got four multiplied by 0 0.49 divided by three, okay? Right, our answer is, is um, uh, as a decimal fraction is 0 0.65. Now, what are we saying? We are saying um, X, okay, um, if you can go back to that, okay, we are saying X, is equals to 0 0.65 mole, right? Now, what are we saying? We are saying that if all the 0 0.49 of chlorine reacts, how much of iron is needed? It's 0 0.65. Already, how much of iron did we have? We've got 0 0.71. It means all the chlorine will react and some of this comma 0 0.71 moles will actually react and some of it will be left. So in other words, we are saying that chlorine is our limiting reagent. So therefore, we are saying chlorine gas is the limiting reagent, right? If chlorine is the limiting reagent, what does it say by implication? We are saying that uh, ion is the one that is in excess because of the 0 0.71, only 0 0.65 moles of ion will react based on the stoichiometric ratio, right, okay? Then um, the follow-up question says, how many grams of the other reactants are in excess? Very important question, right? We had, uh, because ion, okay, is in excess, okay? Not all the ion actually reacts, okay? So the, the, the remain unreacted moles, okay, of ion, Okay, of ion is equals to actually what we started with 0 0.71 less 0 0.65. If you can uh, quickly go back and confirm uh, because what actually reacts is 0 0.65, right? So 0 0.65 moles. So how many moles are there? We can uh, quickly verify that and say, okay, we started with 0 0.71. Of that 0 0.71, only 0 0.65 of it reacted, okay? We need to subtract that, 0 0.65. So how much is unreacted uh, as a decimal fraction, 0 0.06, right? 
So only 0 0.06 moles are unreacted. But the question says, how many grams? So the moment it says grams, we are interested in which quantity the mass unreacted, okay? So mass that is unreacted will change these moles back to uh, uh, the mass. So we know that moles of substance is mass over molar mass. But here, what are we talking about? We're talking about iron because it is in excess, right? Now, the moles is 0 0.606 that is unreacted, okay, is equal to whatever mass we're looking for over 56. So the unreacted mass is actually that product, right? So we have 0 0.06 multiplied by the molar mass of iron, which is 56. This gives us, uh, as a decimal fraction, 3.36 grams, right? So 3,36 grams of iron is unreacted, okay? So that's, that's the main idea in as far as uh, the stoichiometric calculation. So if we say from the ratio of four is to three, right? And then all of the chlorine reacts, it means chlorine is the limiting reagent, which will determine the amount of iron three chloride that will be formed. So if chlorine is the limiting reagent, it tells us that iron is the one that is in excess. So in terms of language, let's pay attention to that. Uh, we, we understand that a limiting reagent gets used up, okay? And once that limiting reagent has been used up, what essentially happens, the reaction stops. And then we'd say that the reaction has reached completion. Okay, and then for the other substance that is not a limiting reagent, we we'll describe it in terms of the, the substance being uh, in excess. Then we always work in moles because that's the SI unit of quantity of matter. So we can change the unreacted moles to actually determine the mass that remains in terms of the, the excess uh, substance. Okay, right. So these are some of the, 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 the ideas that are, are very important, right. Okay, now the last follow-up question says, how many ion-3 ions are present in the product, right? So in terms of the moles, we know that four of iron forms two moles of the ion-3 chloride, okay? And then three of chlorine actually form two. Okay, it's a very interesting question because we're talking about the number of ions. So this has got to do with the Avogadro number of, 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 you know, of substances, okay, of particles of a substance based on the mole concept. So how much of, of, of ion uh, two is formed, ion three chloride is formed? That's the question that we want to ask ourselves. How many moles will be formed, okay? So four of ion forms two. So the ratio of ion to ion three chloride, okay, which is Fe two Cl three, is the ratio is four produces two, right? So how many moles of ion do, do, did, did react? We said zero comma six five, okay, moles. So zero comma six five for, will form half that because four forms two. 0 0.65 will form half that. So if we go to our calculator once again, we'll say uh, 0 0.65 divided by two, okay? Uh, this gives us, um, as a decimal fraction, 0 0.325, okay? So this will be 0 0.325 moles, okay? Right, but then if we go back to this equation uh, of, in terms of pay formula unit, what do we have? We have got Fe, okay, 2Cl3, right? So in terms of ions, it will be 2Fe, okay, two, uh, 3 plus, right, and plus 3Cl minus. So for every mole of ion 3 chloride, there is double the number of moles of ion. So if we have got 0, 0,325, okay, moles, it will form two times that, which is 0 0.325, okay? Right, so this is the actual number of ions of Fe3 plus, okay? But then we know that number of moles is equal to a number of particles divided by the Avogadro number, right? So we've got this, which is 
are 2 multiplied by 0, 0.325, right, um, is equals to um, number, of, which is uh, the, FE, the, the number of particles, then divided by 6, 0.02 uh, times 10 exponent uh, 23, which is the, the Avogadro number, right? So, so the number of particles is actually a product of that, okay? So if that's the case, we'll would go to our calculator, okay? What does it give us? It's actually a product. We can isolate the number of particles, okay? So which means it's two multiplied by 0, 0,325, okay? Um, times Avogadro number, which is 6, 0,02 uh, times, um, okay? times 10 exponent uh, 23, okay, right. Then uh, this gives us the number. So how many particles are there? So that number is actually uh, 3 comma 9 times 10 exponent 23, okay. 3 comma 9, 1 times 10 exponent, times 10 exponent 23. So this is the actual number of particles, okay. So, you know, the mole concept is, is, is quite broad and the questions on stoichiometry can be on any topic. So it, it is about the mole, okay? So for now, uh, we, we, we just want to try and say, okay, these are the main things, you know, in, in terms of uh, uh, the mole concept, but there is more, a lot of practice will actually boost our confidence in as far as this is concerned, right? We'll take a short break for now, and then after that, we'll continue with more revision uh, on problems based on stoichiometry. Let's take a short breather for now. Now let's look at more questions in as far as uh, stoichiometry revision uh, is concerned. This question says 50 grams of butane, right? A butane is a hydrocarbon. It consists of carbon and hydrogen. So it is used uh, as a fuel uh, and then it burns completely, right? It burns completely in excess oxygen to produce carbon dioxide uh, and water. So if the, the question says, if the statement says it burns completely, it means all the butane uh, actually uh, is used up in the, in, the, in the reaction, meaning butane is our limiting reagent and then oxygen is in excess because we are told that this combustion or this burning process takes place in excess oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. But just to put this context, you know, into context, let's understand that most hydrocarbons are actually used as, you know, uh, uh, fuels. They are a source of energy. What does that tell us? It tells us that when these fuels bend, the, the, the major, major product uh, that we actually want to get from this fuel is energy. So this is typically an exothermic reaction. Okay, so the carbon dioxide and water are actually the byproducts. Okay, so because energy is not a chemical per se, we would only include the byproducts in the reaction, right? And then um, the question says, uh, calculate the volume of carbon dioxide, right? That will be produced at STP. What does STP stand for? It stands for standard temperature and pressure, right? Because this is a stoichiometric problem, it says that the law of conservation of mass must actually be applied. Now, let's ask ourselves the question, is the equation of reaction balanced or not? If not, then we need to do something about it. Okay, let's check carbon, okay? Carbon is four on the left, one on the right, okay? So then we need to do something. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be tempted to put a four there, okay? Then carbon is sorted. What about hydrogen? We've got 10 of hydrogen on the left, and then two, it means we'll need maybe a five there, okay? Then that leaves us with oxygen, right? Now, if you look at oxygen, on the left is just two, and then on the right, we've got four times two, which is eight plus five, which gives us 13, okay? But already, if it's two is to 13, and then this side will definitely need maybe a 13 over two, okay? But remember, when we balance, we use integers or whole numbers. What does that say? We have to multiply everything by two. 
so that uh, 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 we get rid of that denominator, which is the two. So pay careful attention to that, right? So if we multiply everything by two, we are left with 13 there, okay? Then we'll have two there. Uh, four times two here, we'll get eight, and then here we'll get 10, right? Now let's check uh, uh, if it is balanced indeed. Carbon, it's eight on the left, eight on the right. Hydrogen, t two times 10, that gives us 20. Uh, we also have 20 on the right. Oxygen, we've got 13 times two, which is 26. Now if you go to the right, it's actually 16 plus 10, which, is, which gives us 26. So the stoichiometric ratio in which these substances react to form the product during this combustion reaction. So this burning completely, it's combustion, right? So the term that uh, refers to the bay burning of fuels in excess oxygen is called uh, combustion. So the stoichiometric ratio is 2 is to 13 is to 8 is to 10, right? Now we want to know what is the volume of carbon dioxide that will be produced at STP? This is a multi-step type of a question, okay? So the first part of the multi-step was to balance because the reaction equation for the reaction was not balanced. So we ask ourselves, how, how many moles are present in 50 grams of butane, right? So we know that moles of methane, uh, so butane, which is C4H10, is actually equal to mass of sample over molar mass, all right? Uh, the sample is 50 grams divided by the molar mass of uh, 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 butane. So it's 12 times four, all right? Which is um, 48 plus 10, which is 58, all right? So just to verify that, uh, by means of a calculation. So carbon is, is tw the mass of carbon is 12 multiplied by four, right? Then we would add uh, 10 for hydrogen, okay? Right? Um, plus um, 10, okay? That, that gives us uh, a value of 58, right? That's 58 grams uh, per mole, right? So if we calculate the moles that are present there, so it's gonna be uh, 50, uh, divided by 58, okay? So in a 50 gram sample of butane, we've got 0 0.86 moles, right? So uh, this is 0 0.86 mole, right? Okay, now uh, we want the volume of carbon dioxide. So two moles of butane produce eight. So the ratio of butane to, to C4H10 to carbon dioxide is two is to eight, right? So if we've got 0, 0.86, okay? Uh, it will give us what? Uh, four times that. So if we, we're looking for four times that, it's, it's gonna be four multiplied by 0, 0.86. Where am I getting the four? Where are we getting the four? If two produces eight, it means uh, one will produce four, okay? So that's, uh, we get, a decimal fraction of 3,44 moles, right? So this will produce 3,44 moles. Now we're asking ourselves that if the moles of carbon dioxide um, is equal to 3,44 moles, okay, what volume will be occupied by that number of moles of carbon dioxide? Okay, so what do we know? We know that a mole of any gas at standard temperature and pressure will actually occupy a fixed volume, which is the molar gas volume of 22,4, right? So we know that moles is equal to volume over molar gas volume, right? Now, for us to determine the volume of, of hydrogen gas, we'll then say 3,44 moles um, is equal to the volume that it will occupy divided by the molar gas volume, which is 22,4 cubic decimeters, right? So our volume is actually the product of the moles of carbon dioxide and the molar gas volume. So for us to get that, uh, we can simply uh, do our calculation, 3,44 multiplied by 22,4, which is a constant, right? Okay, this gives us a value of 77,06, right? 77, 
comma zero six cubic decimeters, right? So that's the volume of carbon dioxide that will be formed. So what is important here is to recognize uh, the, which co aspect of the moral concept uh, the question uh, actually deals with. Thereafter, identify the correct formula, do the necessary substitution, but remember to convert the mass into mole. Why? Because the mole is the SI unit of quantity of matter. So this is typically your multi-step type of a problem. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. <music>
very accurate. So you need to familiarize yourself with the use of the scientific calculator, okay? So the concentration uh, in, as a decimal fraction is 0 0.068, right? So 0 0.068 mol per cubic decimeter, right? So what do we have here? The ionization or the dissociation of the potassium sulfate for every mole of uh, our potassium sulfate, we get two moles of, the ratio is one is to two, two moles of potassium ion. So the concentration of potassium ions in this is equal to actually two multiplied by 0 0.068, okay? Then this gives us, uh, if we can quickly calculate that, we'll get this, we'll multiply by two, we double it, okay? Then this gives us, um, as a decimal fraction, 0 0.136, right? 0 0.136 mole per cubic decimeter, right? So that's as far as the, the question is concerned. Also, you may think of this as a multi-step type of a problem. And then let's shift our attention to a different scenario altogether. It says here, calcium carbonate is a key component of eggshells. If it says it's a component, it means it's made of, the eggshells are made of calcium carbonate and other substances, okay? Which is uh, very important for skeletons, okay? And then a group of learners decided to determine the percentage composition of calcium carbonate in the shells. Uh, it, it, it's, it's STP, standard temperature and pressure. So we've got five grams sample of the shells which are crushed and reacted with hydrochloric acid according to the balanced equation of reaction. So the stoichiometric ratio in which they react, it's one is to two, is to one, is to one, is to one, right? That's very important. And then it, this reaction was also conducted at standard temperature and pressure. Now, wait a minute, the moment we see STP, we immediately think of the molar gas volume, that a mole of any gas at standard temperature and pressure would occupy a fixed volume, which is 22,4 cubic decimeter per mole, right? So that is in terms of the table of the physical constants, which is something that you need to familiarize yourself in as far as the formula sheet is concerned, right? So we are told that there is 1,06 cubic decimeters of carbon dioxide which was collected, okay? Now we'd ask ourselves how many moles of carbon dioxide were actually formed, okay? Then we'd work backwards to determine the purity of calcium carbonate, right? Okay, so from this, we know that there's 1,06 more, uh, that's the volume of the carbon dioxide gas that was collected. So in other words, we'll say uh, moles of carbon, okay? Moles of carbon dioxide is equals to volume over molar gas volume. So that's the first part of this multi-step problem. So uh, we can determine uh, the, the, the actual moles of, of, of that. So we'll say number of moles of carbon dioxide is equals to um, the volume is 1,06 divided by 22,4, which is the actual molar gas volume, okay? So we can quickly uh, determine that, so that's um, 1,06, okay, divided by 22,4, which is the, the constant. So how many moles are there? 0, 0,047, right? 0, 0,047 moles, okay? Now, if we work backwards, we uh, would ask ourselves that if one mole of carbon dioxide is produced by one mole of calcium carbonate, okay? It means how many moles of calcium carbonate are present? So the moles of calcium carbonate uh, is actually equals to um, the same number of moles because it's one is to one, is equals to 0 0.047 mole. Okay, this is based on the stoichiometric ratio, right? Now, I would also ask ourselves that, okay, what's the mass of 0 0.047 moles of calcium carbonate? We'd know that again, uh, the moles of calcium carbonate um, is equal to, okay, the mass over the molar mass. Now, we also uh, actually need to, to to, to do that calculation, but we know that uh, this is 0, 0,047. 
and the mass of calcium carbonate is actually 100 grams per mole. You can verify that on the, on the calculator. Then we want to ask ourselves, of the five gram sample, okay, what is the actual uh, mass of calcium carbonate? Because remember, we said this calcium carbonate uh, is contained in eggshells. It means there is calcium carbonate in some other substances. Then what's the mass of calcium carbonate that is present in that sample? So we'll go back, okay, and, and actually um, uh, do that calculation on our calculator. What do we have? Uh, we, we're going to have 0, 0.047, okay, um, multiplied by 100, okay. If we multiply that by 100, uh, we get uh, 4,7, right? Now, what is this 4,7 grams? Right, let's, let's break this down and bring this into context. Now, the sample of the eggshell, the total mass is actually uh, uh, five grams. Now, of that five grams, only 4,7 grams is actually calcium carbonate. So in, in other words, we are saying that a major component of that eggshell consists of calcium carbonate, which is 4,7. Then it means the remainder thereof actually is the impurity. Okay, so we can, in a way, get to a point where we are able to determine the percentage purity, right? So how do we move from this? Now, this is the actual mass of calcium carbonate, right? Now, if we want to determine the percentage purity, we know that percentage purity, okay, that's the last part of our multi-step problem, is equals to mass of calcium carbonate in sample, okay? divided by total mass, okay, multiplied by 100, right. So in this case, what do we have? We have uh, the total mass, the mass of the calcium carbonate that we've managed to calculate is 4,7 grams, okay, divided by the total mass of the sample, which is uh, uh, um, 5 grams, right. We multiply this by 100, okay. So if we go to our calculator. This is the, the easy part because we've done all the science now. It's just the calculation that's left. What do we have? We have 4,7, okay, divided by the total mass of the sample, which is 5. We're going to multiply this by 100, okay. This gives us 94%, um, right? Okay, this gives us 94%, right? So now what does the 94% purity mean? It means of the five gram sample of the eggshell, what is actually calcium carbonate is 94%, and then the remainder is actually other substance that did not take part in the reaction in forming the carbon dioxide that we collected. So we need to practice these kind of problems you know, quite often so that you become more comfortable in them. So now we've managed to cover most of the important things about these stoichiometric calculations. So practice becomes very, very important. Everything of the best.